I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I genuinely do not know how anyone ever could have believed the whole Jesse Smollett stuff when his name literally rhymes with sussy. Do any of you guys even understand that? It, the, the, like, God was, was, was giving us the info right there. Anyway, found guilty of falsely reporting a hate crime. Uh, do we want the video version? Well, we might, if it would actually play. Do we, do we believe in, in noise? Oh, muted the site. Good call, me. It's been reached. It has now been announced. We've got breaking news in the Jesse Smollett trial. A verdict has not only been reached, it has now been announced. Sarah Seidner, you have the details. That's right. Uh, Jesse Smollett, a jury has found that he is guilty of five of six counts of disorderly conduct. Now, of those five counts, I'm just going to sort of give you a little bit of what the law is there and what he was charged with and what he is now convicted of. On count one, it was making a false police report that he was a victim of a hate crime to Officer Bay, one of the officers that took that report. The second count, they found him guilty of making a false police report that he was a victim of a battery to that same officer. The third count. The jury found that he was guilty of making a false police report uh, as the victim of a hate crime to another detective. And then on count four, guilty of making a false police report that he was a victim of a battery to that... Okay, you get the gist. Yeah, okay, he faked a hate crime. Uh, mega cringe. Uh, and now he's in trouble. Here's the full timeline, by the way. You know, I, I think when this actually... This, this actually happened, like, right when I started my channel. I don't know if I covered it at the time. Why are we talking about this, Vosh? Because conservatives are going to use it as a distraction for future actual hate crimes? Yes. Also, I think it's important that everyone, conservative and lefty, understand that, uh, uh, you know, there's universal condemnation of Smollett here, okay? This goes beyond, like, cynical accusations of race baiting. This stuff is legitimately dangerous. Faking claims like this is... Uh, not only does it cheapen discourse uh, in, in, in all directions, um, Oh, we'll get to the BLM article, Grimopi. Don't you worry. We will. Anyway, here's the timeline, for those of you who don't know. Smollett reports to police receiving a threatening letter sent to the Fox studio where Empire is filmed containing threatening language and laced with a powdery substance investigators believe was likely crushed up Tylenol. Brilliant stuff. Smollett is allegedly attacked at 2 a.m., just a week later, near his apartment in Chicago. Two masked assailants poured, quote, an unknown chemical substance on him, end quote, possibly bleach, and wrapped a rope around his neck, he told police. My God. In a fo <laughs> I feel like I feel like I was channeling internet historian there. I, I just, I binged all of his videos a week ago, and I feel like I just, all right. <laughs> I, yeah, it's him. Uh, in a follow-up interview with police, Smollett alleges that the attackers yelled MAGA country a reference to President Donald Trump's Make America Great Again slogan. Really, is that a reference or just, do, you know, like, would you say like them wearing red MAGA hats is a reference to Trump, you know, as internet historians are fascist, unfortunately? I don't think, okay, a bit aside, I don't know if he is or not. I know that some of his videos in 2016 were, seemed kind of far right. Um, in all the videos he's put out recently, he's just come off as kind of an edgy person. Uh, look at his Twitter likes them out. Oh, dear. All right. Well, look, regardless of whatever else, you know, I, I love his videos. I think he's quite responsible, too, with, with, the, with the production of his actual videos. Um, let's see. We've got likes on Elon Musk. A bunch of people I don't know or care about. Uh, some stuff memeing about Rittenhouse in a politically undifferentiated way. Libs of TikTok, that's kind of conservative. Um, some edgy stuff. Uh, Elon, Elon Musk again. Jeez, that's Zuby. It seems like conservative stuff. Look, I don't care. I like the videos. Can we not ruin everything for me? Listen, shh. Um, he liked the JonTron tweets reporting, reporting to you? Really? Did he? Uh, oof. Uh, you, you mean the vaccine ones? The ones that he ended up, like, deleting? Or, or did you just didn't follow through on it? Whew. That's, uh... Yep. Ooh, well. Oh, dear. Anyway. 
Look, I like the videos, okay? Costa Concordia. 10 out of 10. That and the Q&A after. Wait, John trying to delete those? Oh, he... I don't, I don't remember. He's dropped off of it. Anyway. Um, January 30th, the next day. Chicago police announced in a tweet that they are seeking two persons of interest captured on surveillance video near the scene and around the time of the alleged attack. Uh, the next next day, Smollett's family releases an emotional statement describing the alleged attack as a hate crime. Oof. Jesse is a yeah, warrior whose of light Empire cannot Jesse. be dimmed. That's some, you know, pretty, pretty serious stuff right there. Um, in the early hours of Tuesday morning, our beloved son and brother Jesse, again, rhymes with sussy, was the victim of a violent and unprovoked attack. Um, Jesse has told everything to the police, blah, blah. Smollett releases a new statement thanking his fans on the next, next, next day. Uh, maintains his account in the alleged attack has been consistent. Uh, says he believes justice will be served. Uh, makes his appearance on stage. Chicago police released the initial incident report about the alleged attack. The report reveals that Smollett was apparently reluctant to report the attack, and that when the police arrived at his home to interview him, he was still wearing the rope around his neck. Interesting. The report states that a 60-year-old friend of Smollett called the police on his behalf and said the actor, quote, did not want to report offense, however, he believed it to be in the best interest to, end quote. Smollett said the attack happened at around 2 a.m. as he was leaving a Subway restaurant. Uh, the Subway stay open that late? He told police the two attackers gained his attention by yelling racial and homophobic slurs and began to beat him, quote, about the face with their hands, end quote, the report said. The primary aggressor was wearing a black mask concealing any fe facial features, and both offenders were dressed in black. Uh, he didn't remember any other distinguishing features from the offenders or in which direction they fled. Ten days with no developments passed, prompting skepticism about Smollett's account. Unbeknownst to the public, are we enjoying this, this dramatic reading, by the way? I am. I'm enjoying it very much. Unbeknownst to the public, Chicago police investigators have been tracking the two, quote, persons of interest, end quote, and were aware of who they were for a while. A law enforcement source subsequently told ABC News. Investigators learned that these two men were returning to Chicago on February 13th from Nigeria and moved in. The pair were detained at the airport, placed under arrest, and taken in for questioning. The next day, February 14th, my birthday, by the way, you know, Valentine's Day, in an exclusive interview with Good Morning America anchor Robin Roberts, Smollett said he was heartbroken when he found out people questioned the details of his story. He defended himself against skeptics who pointed out it wasn't until a follow-up interview with the police he mentioned the assailants yelled MAGA country at him. He also complained about erroneous reports that he had told police the attackers were actually wearing red MAGA hats. For me, the main thing was the idea that I somehow switched up my story, you know? And that somehow maybe I added a little extra trinket, you know, of the MAGA thing, well, it said. I didn't need to know anything like that. Or didn't need to add anything like that. They called me an F-slur. They called me an N-word. There's no way... You can cut it. I don't need some MAGA hat as the cherry on top of some racist Sunday. In the ABC News interview, Smollett also confirmed reports that he was initially reluctant to contact the police or hand over his cell phone to help with the investigation. They wanted to give me my phone to the tech for three or four hours. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do that, the singer said, because I have private pictures and videos and numbers, my partner's number, my family's number, my castmate's number, my friend's numbers, my private emails, my private songs, my private voice memos, private songs. This one I'm curious about. I have no... No idea what, what that would be referring to. Uh, them. The same day the interview aired, Smollett is re-interviewed by Chicago police investigators. By evening, police sources confirmed that they obtained search warrants and raided the homes of the two individuals, recovering bleach, shoes, electronics, and other items. It was his mixtape, was it ready? Just the, the, uh, just the, the idea of keeping that on your phone seems odd to me, but I guess that's possible. Uh, the Chicago police announced they've identified and are questioning the two persons of interest captured on a surveillance video. By midday, a CPD spokesman tells ABC News that the two, quote, persons of interest, end quote, are in fact under arrest and acknowledged the pair 
has a relationship with Smollett. Ooh. In an unusual move for an ongoing investigation, police officials who had originally described the two as persons of interest began describing them as potential suspects. But by late that evening, investigators changed course and announced that the two men have been released without charges. Oh no. Chicago police identified the two men they arrested and later released as brothers, Olabino and Abimbola Usendero. That's just a guess on my part. You can stay mad about it. Both U.S. citizens of Nigerian descent. Later in the day, police said they were, quote, eager to speak to Jesse Smollett, end quote, based on new information they obtained after the interrogations. Can you imagine Smollett seeing the TV, uh, seeing this being said, you know? Um, eager to speak to Jesse Smollett. I w if I was, uh, you know, um, lying about a crime, the last thing that I would want to hear after hearing that the two people I'd penned were released without charges was that the police are eager to speak to me. That's... Whew. Police contacted the actor's attorneys and said their intentions are clear. Yet in a late night statement from his incidents, uh, from his attorneys on Saturday, Smollett hit back at the suggestion that the incident was a hoax and expressed disbelief the brothers could have been involved. Two people. As a victim of a hate crime who has cooperated with the police investigation, Jussie Smollett is angered and devastated by recent reports that the perpetrators are individuals he's familiar with. Hmm. Began a statement from Smollett's attorneys, Todd Poo and Victor Henderson. He has now been further victimized by claims attributed to these alleged perpetrators that Jussie played a role in his own attack. Nothing is further from the truth, and anyone claiming otherwise is lying. One of these purported suspects was Jesse's personal trainer, who he hired to ready him physically for a music video. Ah, the songs, it's coming around. The statement continued, It is impossible to believe that this person would have played a role in the crime against Jesse, or would falsely claim Jesse's complicity. Hmm. Is it? I guess we'll only find out by continuing to read in this exaggerated narrator's voice. February 17th. The Usandairo brothers, who were interrogated by police investigating the alleged attack on Smollett in Chicago, told authorities that the Empire actor, that show any good by the way, I've never seen it, allegedly paid them to help him orchestrate and stage the crime. Sources sold ABC News. Snitches! They ratted on him. The Osandero brothers agreed to cooperate with authorities after detectives confronted them with evidence that they bought the rope allegedly used in an attack that Smollett described to police as laced with racial and homophobic slurs at a Chicago hardware store, sources said. The two brothers, who were interrogated by police investigating the alleged Chicago street attack on Smollett, unnecessary info considering the fact that we're already midway through the article, um, claim that they helped him concoct the assault after he became upset that a letter threatening him sent to the Empire Show studio did not get enough attention, sources told ABC News. A spokesperson for Smollett said the actor's attorneys are keeping an active dialogue going with Chicago police on behalf of the actor. We are not racist, Osandairo Brothers said in a statement. We are not homophobic, and we are not anti-Trump. <laughs> we were born and raised in Chicago and are American citizens. First of all, man, which one of these is the physical trainer? My God. Second of all, um, you know what this statement says to me? It says, leave us the fuck out of it, okay? We're not racist. We're not anti-racist. We don't believe anything. Please leave me alone. We were, we were paid money to do a job. Do not talk about me. Don't talk to me. I don't want to see my name in the news. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it worked because I don't think there was a bunch of, you know, uh, kerfuffle over them afterwards. Anyway, uh, brilliant bodies. No getting around that. Jesus. No. <clears throat> anyway. Chicago police say they're following up on a tip that on the night Smollett reported being attacked, he was in an elevator of his apartment building with the two Nigerian brothers. Police later dismissed the tips as not credible based on video evidence. Yeah, that'd be a bit of a, you know, audacious false report if, if you're in an elevator in a building where there are probably security cameras at the time that you're saying that you were attacked somewhere else. Two federal officials tell ABC News that the FBI and U.S. Postal Service are investigating whether Smollett played a role in sending a threatening letter before the alleged attack. Ooh! 
They're even coming after him for the letter. Chicago's top prosecutor, Cook County State Attorney Kim Fox. What a movie name. My God. Kim Fox recuses herself from the investigation, quote, out of an abundance of caution to address potential questions of impartiality based upon familiarity with potential witnesses in this case, end quote. According to the Associated Press, Fox's first assistant, Joe Magates, will oversee the case. I wonder, with whom are they familiar? One of the witnesses? Who? Cook County's quite big, you know? I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, these names. Fox had acted as an early intermediary between Smollett's family and the Chicago Police Department. Ah! Question asked, question answered, according to a statement released by her office. Quote, shortly after the incident occurred in late January, state's attorney Fox had conversations with a family member of Jesse Smollett about the incident and their concerns and facilitated a connection to the Chicago Police Department who were investigating the incident, end quote. Robert Foley, a senior advisor to Fox, according to WLS, Vosh, you're too happy today? What's happening? I'm in a great mood. Uh, first of all, this is quite funny. And second of all, uh, I didn't get to stream for two days. And now I'm getting to narrate a very funny sequence of events. And I do love narrating, by the way, you know, not quite as immediately gripping as analysis, but just choosing the, you know, the intonations is still quite fun. Smollett had been charged with felony disorderly conduct for filing a false report after allegedly staging the attack against himself in Chicago. Police and the state attorney's office confirmed to ABC News. The charge of felony disorderly conduct carries a penalty of one to three years in jail, according to the criminal statute. Detectives will make contact with his legal team to negotiate a reasonable surrender for his arrest. A scary statement, if there ever is one. Chicago police spokesman Anthony G G Guglielmi, Guglielmi? Christ, said on Twitter. What is that, Italian? What? Something. I assume it's Italian. People are Italian hansing in chat. Mamma mia, they say. Um, by Wednesday evening, the Chicago Police Department had officially classified Smollett as a suspect in an ongoing criminal investigation for filing a false report. The announcement in a tweet from the Chicago Police Department's verified account represents another stunning twist in an investigation that has seen more than its share of such developments. The tweet also announced that detectives are presenting evidence to a grand jury. It's pronounced Guilmi, 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 Guilmi. Guglielmi. 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 Well. Case update. <laughs> Jesse Smollett is now officially classified as a suspect in the criminal investigation by hashtag Chicago Police for filing a false police report, Class 4 felony. Detectives are currently presenting evidence. Oh, wait, he's Italian, isn't he? A, uh, a case update. Jesse Smollett. No, wait, that's Borat. Hmm. My wife. Moving on. Meanwhile, 20th Century Fox Television and Fox Entertainment continue to stand by the embattled Empire actor and continue to deny reports that he was or is being written off the hit show. Jesse Smollett continues to a consummate professional on set, and we have previously stated he is not being written out of the show. Smollett turned himself in to Chicago police to face a felony charge of filing a false report, a crime that, if convicted, could put him into jail for one to three years. In an emotional press conference, Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie T. Johnson, these movie names, blasted Smollett on Thursday, in which he said that Smollett's alleged staging of a hoax attack was a, quote, publicity stunt to promote his career. Jesse Smollett took advantage of the pain and anger of racism to promote his career, Johnson said. True. I'm left hanging my head asking, why? Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use the symbolism of a noose to make false accusations? And, side note, by the way, laying it on a bit thick, aren't we? Homophobic and racial slurs, MAGA country, a noose. I mean, really. <laughs> just just right, out, yeah, right outside a subway. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just... Going around with my hangman's noose, looking for a black man. <laughs> Stupid. 
How can an individual who's been embraced by the city of Chicago turn around and slap everyone in the face uh, in the city in the face with these false claims? True, Berman. Johnson charged that Smollett, the actor on the hit show Empire, who has consistently denied any role in staging the alleged attack, orchestrated it because he was dissatisfied with his salary. Really, I don't see a relationship between those things. Uh, in a new statement on Thursday, 20th Century Fox Television and Fox Entertainment officials said that, quote, we understand the seriousness of this matter and respect the legal process. We are evaluating the situation and we are considering our options. The Cook County State Attorney's Office announced that the previous day, a grand jury indicted Empire actor Jesse Smollett on 16 felony counts of disorderly conduct for filing a false police report, according to the Cook County State Attorney's Office. And by the way, well-deserved in my, you know, my personal opinion, uh, filing false police reports is a serious crime and should be treated as such. Uh, to do so with uh, such, you know, gravitas and in such a politically charged way, I think is du doubly heinous, in my opinion. The narrative is that he faked a hate crime to show the role he was playing was endangering him and so needed higher pay. If his motivations were truly that shallow, I think he should have gotten 17 felony counts. The grand jury returned the two separate sets of charges. Robert Foley, a senior advisor in the state attorney's office, told ABC News. The first set is related to what Smollett told officers about the alleged attack, including that the attackers called him racial and homophobic slurs. Is he, is he gay, by the way, or is just homophobic thrown in there? Struck him with their hands, put a noose around his neck, and poured some sort of chemical substance on it. He is gay? Okay, gotcha. Uh, the second set of charges are related to the second interview Smollett had with police about the alleged attack later that day. At an emergency hearing in a Cook County courtroom in Illinois, all criminal charges against Smollett were dropped. Ooh. Jesse was attacked by two people he was unable to identify on January 29th. His uh, attorneys, Tina Glandian and Patricia Brown Holmes, said in a statement, He was a victim who was vilified and made to appear as a perpetrator as a result of fake and inappropriate remarks made to the public causing an inappropriate rush to judgment. Jesse and many others were hurt by these unfair and unwarranted actions. This entire situation is a reminder that there should never be an attempt to prove a case in the court of public opinion. That is wrong. It is a reminder that the victim, in this case, Sussy Jesse, deserves dignity and respect. Jesse is relieved to have the situation behind him and is very much looking forward to getting back to focusing on his family, friends, and career. The unanticipated development shocked Chicago and prompted angry reactions from Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson, who each reiterated their belief that the incident was a hoax, with Emanuel wondering aloud, is there no decency in this man? For a mayor to say that about a, a case? Whew. The duo went on to accuse Empire actor of receiving preferential treatment by the Illinois State Attorney's Office. This is without a doubt a whitewash of justice. Very funny choice of words, considering the circumstances. Uh, Emmanuel said at a news conference Tuesday afternoon, There is no accountability. It is wrong. Full stop. Johnson said he was surprised to learn of the decision to drop charges against Smullett while attending a police academy graduation with Mayor Emmanuel. A furious Johnson said prosecutors brokered a deal with Smollett in secrecy. I'm sure we all know what happened this morning, Johnson said at his press conference. Do I think justice was served? No. What do I think justice is? I think the city is owed an apology. At the end of the day, it's Mr. Smollett who committed this hoax, period, Johnson said. I heard that they wanted their day in court so America could know the truth, and they chose to hide behind a veil of secrecy, a brokered deal to circumvent the judicial system. Johnson said he and Emmanuel only learned about the charges being dropped when it was announced publicly. And this little bit goes on for some time. The outrage. We found about it. Uh, we found out about it when you all did, Johnson said, of the lack of notice from the state's attorney's office regarding the dropped charges. I'm sure we'll have some conversation after this, but at the end of the day, Mr. Smollett committed this hoax. Very confident. Emmanuel noted that a sliver of the evidence was, prevent was presented to a grand jury, which indicted Smollett. He said Smollett used race and privilege to get off scot-free and that the actor had shown no remorse or accountability for his actions. Uh, a person using hate crime laws that are on the books to protect people who are minorities, and you use them to advance your career. Uh, is there no decency in this man? Well, we already got that quote. 
how long are we going to hear about the outrage? We need the, the you know, the, 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 the critical conclusion to this, don't we? Um, well, we're nearing done. In a subsequent interview with ABC News Chicago station, WLS, the prosecutor who dropped the charges against Smollett told ABC News station WLS, yeah, we know, that he believes Smollett made a false report about being attacked, but decided to drop the charges anyway. We stand behind the investigation and the facts revealed. I hate grand juries, said Joe Maggots, the first assistant state attorney who took over the case when his boss, Kim Fox, recused herself. Uh, in fact, according to text messages obtained by the Chicago Tribune, Fox reached out to Johnson and asked him to turn the probe over to the FBI, though the police department ultimately completed the investigation independently. We believe he did what he was charged with what he was doing. Thank you. Asked again whether he believes Smollett fabricated the incident, he replied, Yes. This was not an exoneration. To say he was exonerated by us or anyone is not true. In answer to questions about dropping the charges, Maggots uh, initially suggested it was a question of resources and that he decided to drop the charges after determining. Our goal and our number one priority is combating violent crime and the drivers of violence, and we look to our resources to do that. And I don't think Mr. Smollett is a driver of violence or a violent individual. Now this, to me, is hardcore police bias. You don't get to just let criminals go because they're not violent criminals. Do you think this would have been done for an actor, for, for a person who wasn't like a wealthy actor, you know? Like some random black guy shoplifted and they're like, oh, well, we decided to drop the charges because, you know, uh, you know like there's violent crimes. out there. I, If they had, you know, applied this attitude consistently, it might be socially beneficial, but I don't think it is here. Magate said uh, he was satisfied with Smollett forfeiting the 10% of the 100k bond he put up and completing community service prior to getting the charges dropped. In return for forfeiting his bond, the city of Chicago, and doing his community service, we agreed to dismiss the charges against him. He did community service for Operation Push. Then, finally, the timeline advances. An Illinois judge rules that records sealed in the hoax attack criminal case of Empire cast member Jesse Smollett be made public, ruling that the actor had not displayed the, quote, actions of a person seeking to maintain his privacy. Cook County Circuit Court Judge Stephen G. Watkins, again with the movie names, ordered that investigative files in the high-profile case be unsealed after ABC News and other media organizations argued that keeping them from public view was a violation of the First Amendment and the public's right to access to court records. Cook County Judge Michael Tooman, that's not a, that's not a movie name, appoints a special prosecutor to investigate the decision to dismiss all charges against Smollett, opening up the possibility the actor could be charged again, the Associated Press reports. Tooman also suggested that Fox may have mishandled the case by appointing a top aide to oversee it after she recused herself. Oh, no, 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 no. June 24th, 2019. Police release nearly 70 hours of video in connection to the Smollett investigation, including body camera footage of the actor with the noose around his neck. The video footage also includes Smollett asking the officers to turn off their recording devices, while another group of clips uh, shows the moment when the police apprehend the two brothers who allege they helped Smollett stage the attack. Smollett, 37, is indicted on six counts of disorderly conduct. Remember, that's the number uh, that he was uh, convicted on at the beginning of this little story related to making four separate false reports to Chicago Police Department officers claiming he was the victim of a hate crime while, quote, knowing he was not the victim of a crime, end quote. Special, oh, convicted on five, sorry, charged with six. This is the number he was charged with. Special Prosecutor Dan Webb said in a statement on Tuesday, Despite substantial abuses of discretion and operational failures, the dismissal of charges against Jussie Smollett Cook County State's Attorney Kimberly Fox and her staff did not rise to the level of criminal wrongdoing, according to Special Prosecutor Dan K. Webb. The 29th of November. Ooh, we're getting quite close to the uh, modern day. Jury selection for Smollett's trial begins Monday. December 7th, three days ago. The defense of Smollett rests its case after two days of emotional testimony by the actor. 
He alleged on the stand that the Osandario brothers, who had testified the previous week, were lying about their claims that Smollett orchestrated the attack and paid them 3500 to do so. If you want people to be complicit in a crime, you need to pay them quite a bit more than $3,500 to keep them their mouths shut when the police come for them, okay? Um, you want to see the police confronting him wearing the noose? Why not? Let's see how ridiculous that looked to the police officers themselves. Rich people houses. Making our way up. Audio redacted by police. This is where they were talking about Epstein's Island. Any, uh, any weapons or anything inside no, the apartment? Like the <laughs> yep. So, so Wait, is that? It looks like it. Yeah, say that looks like it. Yeah. The cops are like, you're filming this, right? Like, like you're seeing this, right? Yeah, I just wanted you to see it. It's in his house. You're being audio and read. Audio. I guess when I, I mean, they didn't know they were walking. I want to be filming. Okay, so can we turn it off? Yeah. You're giving us permission to shut it off. And they ask him to, to, to turn the uh, body camera footage. Why they blur his face? Probably just uh, operational procedure. I mean, we all know that's sussy Jesse. Anyway, uh, we we arrive now at the thrilling end to this uh, to this tale. After ten hours of deliberations, the jury finds Smollett guilty of five of six counts for filing a false police report related to the attack. And look at that! We finally made our way to the end. How crazy was that, huh? Twists and turns abound. Um, I, uh, I, I don't like Sussy Jesse very much. I think that's quite bad, actually. Now, you pointed this out at the beginning. This isn't the end of this particular tale. See, uh, the Black Lives Matter org released a statement. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's a little sussy was he? The below is a statement from Dr. Melina Abdullah, director of BLM Grassroots and co-founder of BLM Los Angeles regarding the ongoing trial of Jesse Smollett. So this was from the 7th of December, before the convictions. As abolitionists, we approach situations of injustice with love and align ourselves with our community. Because we got us. So let's be clear. We love everyone in our community. It's not about a trial or a verdict decided in a white supremacist charade. It's about how we treat our community when corrupt systems are working to devalue our lives. In an abolitionist society, this trial would not be taking place, and our communities would not have to fight and suffer to prove our worth. Instead, we find ourselves once again being forced to put our lives and our value in the hands of judges and juries operating in a system that is designed to oppress us, while continuing to face a corrupt and violent police department which has proven time and time again to have no respect for our lives. They got that on the last point, that's true, but... Uh, relevance? In our commitment to abolition, we can never believe police, especially the Chicago Police Department, over Jesse Smollett, a black man who has been courageously present, visible, and vocal in the struggle for black freedom. While policing at large is an irredeemable institution, CPD is notorious for its long and deep history of corruption, racism, and brutality. From the murders of Fred Hampton, RIP, and Mark Clark, to the Borge tortures, Borg? I don't know. To the murder of Laquan McDonald and subsequent cover up to hundreds of others killed by Chicago police over the years and thousands who have su survived abuse, Chicago police consistently demonstrate they are among the worst of the worst. Police lie and Chicago police lie especially. 
Black Lives Matter will continue to work toward the abolition of police in every unjust system. We will continue to love and protect one another and wrap our arms around those who do the work to usher in black freedom and by extension freedom for everyone else. I've got some choice words, you know. Uh, I've got a few choice words, actually. Uh, so we'll, we'll just sort of, in no particular order. Um, I don't typically talk about the BLM organization because I'm more concerned with Black Lives Matter, the mass movement that hundreds of millions of people participated in, you know? I do think that it was quite irresponsible of the organization to name themselves the same thing as the public movement, to selfishly and out of entitlement name themselves, uh, share the name of the public cause, you know? I, I think that's a remarkably... Uh, uh, there are a lot of really negative words. Uh, it's a remarkably stupid thing to do. Um, especially when you're going to pull shit like this. So, to compare Jussie Smollett to Fred fucking Hampton, I mean, to, to, talk, to talk about him like he's just another black man being lynched by the Chicago Police Department is such an exceptional smack in the face to Fred Hampton and everybody else named here. It is unimaginable. Uh, Jussie Smollett is, by all apparent accounts, a grifter and a race baiter whose interest in racial... Uh, justice begins and ends with his self-aggrandizing, his betterment, the attention he can draw to himself. To compare him to real civil rights activists is abhorrent. Additionally, the evidence raised against him was not just the testimony of Chicago police officers. His noose that they walked in on him wearing, that's just, they caught it on camera. That's not their testimony. He did it. It's not even being contested. It was the testimony of the other two black men in the trial the Nigerian brothers who alleged that they were paid three and a half thousand dollars each to commit the fake crime. Uh, this is not a matter of police testimony or brutality. In fact, it was the mis uh, it was the grand jury's uh, privileged treatment of Jesse Smollett to begin with that led to the first set of charges, the 16 being dropped. The police were favorable to Jesse Smollett. Because capital is, at the end of the day, the greatest privilege we have. More so than race. You can call me a class reductionist if you want, but, you know, I would, I would much rather be a billionaire black man in America than a desperately poor white man. Cla capital is the overriding privilege in capitalist societies. Doesn't erase everything, but goddamn if it doesn't make things a hell of a lot easier. It's just so disgusting. And, and, and when I read stuff like this, it makes me think, the people who wrote this, the people who signed off on this, do they give a fuck about racism or do they just care about their race, you know? Because this to me reads like the sort of thing that a person who is pro-black might write, not anti-racism, not anti-white supremacy, you know? The writer is a supporter of Farrakhan. Well, that about does it, doesn't it? Is that true? Dr. Melissa Abdullah. Let's... That would do it, wouldn't it? Oh. Nice. All right. So, new, new tactic. Uh, I think this woman should be in jail. Uh, I think she should spend her entire life in jail for thought crimes. Uh, Luis Farrakhan is a Nazi. The Nation of Islam killed... Uh, Malcolm X and is destructive towards the interests of black people and this person should be removed from their job. What is their job? Tenured professor Department of Pan-African Studies these people should be removed from their jobs they're explicitly anti uh, 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 black they are in favor of segregationism they are supporters of hate movements I am so fucking tired of white liberals, and that's who's responsible at the end of the day for this, okay? She was not appointed to chair of the Department of Pan-African Studies by wooing black people. It's self-hating, guilty-feeling, liberal whites who are constitutionally incapable of differentiating between positive racial justice and black people who just don't like white people very much. They cannot differentiate between the two. And because they're so guilty and self-hating, 
uh, they they will just uh, they they will just uh, sign off on anything and everything. And I know that because I went to college, and so did a lot of you, didn't you? Yes, you did. And you know who I'm talking about. Guilty, self-hating white liberals. Not leftists, liberals. Time and time again. People who do not understand racial justice. They don't. They don't understand it. They know MLK was good. They, uh, they get some of the basics. You know, Some of them even think that Malcolm X is pretty cool. But at the end of the day, because as liberals, they are constitutionally incapable of meaningful systemic analysis, they cannot differentiate between a person being pro-black and anti-white, a person being anti-racism or in favor of switching who's on top of an existing racist hierarchy, a person who critiques white supremacy and a person who critiques white people. They can't see the difference because a lack of systemic analysis will preclude people towards essentialization. And that is precisely, liberals like Professor Flowers, that is precisely what leads them to blindness on these issues. And I'm okay with saying this. You know why? Because black people in America don't like Louis Farrakhan. I know that because I'm not a fucking idiot. Because I'm not a stupid fucking LARPy ideologue who thinks that every black person is willing to go, you know, uh, pack everything in a bindle and run off to Africa to form an ethnostate. Because I'm not a lunatic who pretends to represent their interests while secretly, personally, just using all political advocacy to fuel my self-aggrandizing hatred of ethnic groups that I dislike. Because I understand, as Fred Hampton did, as M Malcolm X did before he was killed, as Martin Luther King did, that real anti-racism is brotherhood across all lines. And sisterhood, you know, partnerhood. We don't need to make it a gender thing. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? I think I, I genuinely think it's reprehensible. Anybody who will positively invoke Fred Hampton and supports Luis Farrakhan doesn't understand Fred Hampton and should keep his name out of their dirty fucking mouths. Ideologically opposed. If Luis Farrakhan and Fred Hampton were both alive today, that Luis Fer they'd be paying hitmen for each other, you know? They'd be buying off, they'd be run, running all around the world, you know, hiding out in Mexico, Guatemala, over to, you know, Guam, people taking shots. They would have hated each other.